The cool bokeh, the majestic lens flares, we all love it, but is anamorphic the be all end all lens choice for all of your projects? No, not a chance, and this video is going to talk about why. But before we get into that, my name is Brady and welcome back. Before we get into this video, if you like this one or any of the other ones, please hit that like and subscribe button on this channel and it'll make me very happy. Now, this is not in any way a scientific or a technical comparison or review of each of the lens types, but it's more so my thought process behind deciding if I'm shooting a project on spherical or on anamorphic lenses. I don't typically get into the technical side of gear, but I more so focus on the actual result that it's going to have on each and every individual project and the story backing it. There are many, many, many pros and cons to both spherical and anamorphic lenses, not all of which I'm going to touch on today, but just a handful that really impact my decision when in pre-production. At first, anamorphic lenses confuse the heck out of me. They're a lot more difficult to get your hands on than spherical lenses are, so a lot of questions were bouncing around my head. I heard the image is squeezed and you had to de-squeeze it and I had no idea what that meant or how to actually do so. So, a little bit of quick learning here. So for reference, the anamorphic lens that I'm using in this video is Vazen's 40mm T2 1.8x stretch anamorphic. So the most confusing thing to me in anamorphic lenses was the stretch or the squeeze factor, so let's talk about that first. Anamorphic lenses are built a little bit differently than spherical lenses. As well as the spherical elements that they have in the lens, they also have some uh, like oblong, oval, or I guess elliptical, ellipse elements oval built into it as well, giving it this weird kind of squished, pinched look. And the history on that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it goes back to the film days with the intentions of taking a wider field of view and squeezing it so it fits on a film strip. And if I'm wrong with that, please correct me down in the comments with the proper history, just so we all know. But the intention of which is to take a wide field of view and squeeze it into a squeezed frame to which later on in post you are going to de-squeeze, meaning stretch out the image back to its wide field of view. And that's what's gonna give you that Hollywood cinematic wide aspect ratio, that really long and narrow one that just screams cinematic or Hollywood or all of us know it as so. It's confusing, I know, I probably didn't clear up anything. So, a visual here. Your image coming out of your camera shot in anamorphic is going to look squeezed and crushed like this to where you need to then de-squeeze your image back to normal, which is gonna give you that wide aspect ratio, that Hollywood cinematic look. You following? So with an anamorphic 40 millimeter and a spherical equivalent, which is a 50 with a speed booster, 0.71X, so that's gonna be about 39 millimeters I brought it to. Vertically, your focal length is going to be the same. And as well as your compression, your foreground to background ratio. But where everything gets different is this anamorphic is going to stretch a lot wider. So it's gonna be 1.8 times wider. So you're almost looking at about like a 24 millimeter lens when it comes to your width or wide field of view versus this spherical lens is going to stay the same. So that's when you're gonna get a lot wider on each end of the frame and capture a lot more. So even when you add your black bars to your spherical footage to give it that wide look, you're still not getting the full width of field of view as you would with anamorphic and you're actually cropping so you're losing more resolution to your image. So now with this said and this in mind, anamorphic may be a great idea if you're shooting a project that's got a lot of wide narrow shots, say like really long groups of people or say a wide bar shot or a bar scene or it's based around that, something where you're gonna need a lot of width, like horizontal room, but not so much vertical room. But on the contrary, if you're working on a project that needs a lot of headroom, a lot of vertical space, or even if you're working on a project that you know is gonna create social cuts from that, where it's gonna be a lot of vertical crops, then shooting with spherical may help you out because then you're not gonna have such a narrow frame to crop from and you've got a lot more room when it comes to your social media cuts and a lot of diversity for different aspect ratios. So that's something to keep in mind when you're in the pre-production phase of your project planning out the lens choices, whether it's spherical or anamorphic. Now, another factor that may play into your decision of choosing which lens is sharpness and character. Because of the build of anamorphic lenses, they have significantly more elements of glass throughout the body, which gives it this very large size. And by doing so, you're going through more layers, which means there's a lot more refraction of light and reduction of sharpness, which also gives it this character that many people desire. You can see it especially when the lens is wide open at large apertures and on the edges especially, you get this fringing and softness and chromatic aberration that 
isn't necessarily preferred by some, but other people like myself love this character and just this like natural soft feel that it gives off. And then spherical lenses are gonna have a lot less elements of glass throughout the body. And they also tend to be a lot sharper and more clean cut. So it's important to ask yourself when going into a project, if you need this clean cut, sharp clinical look, you might wanna go for a spherical lens. But if you're again like myself and you love that character and the story of course fits, that natural soft look, you may wanna lean towards anamorphic and see if that's a good fit for you. And since we're on the character train, another cool characteristic of anamorphic lenses is in the bokeh, you can see that in the front of the element, everything looks very squished and squeezed and the bokeh resembles that. You can see that any out of focus area is gonna, instead of being spherical like circles like you would on a spherical lens, you're gonna get oblong ovals in this really like cool stretched and weird squeeze softness to the bokeh. So, Feel it out, you want cool bokeh, go towards anamorphic. You want round soft bokeh, a spherical lens may be the best choice because it's just gonna have that classic round circle bokeh. So definitely not gonna be the deciding factor when it comes to the shallow depth of field, the bokeh style shots, but something to keep in mind. Now to the infamous flaring. We all know anamorphic lenses for their ridiculously cool streaky flares. But as we've previously stated, we now know that that is not the only difference that we're gonna get between anamorphic and spherical. But when it comes to these lens flares, whether it's sun hits or any other light source that's gonna be hitting into the lens, anamorphic lenses are gonna have that really cool streak across the lens. And some lenses are gonna be bluer, some are gonna be a little bit warmer. It varies on the anamorphic lens that you're choosing. But the dead giveaway is that when light is hitting into the lens with a spherical lens, you're going to get this round lens flare as it goes through the elements. And it's gonna be a lot more tame. Whereas when you're hitting light into an anamorphic lens, you're gonna get one, that beam that's gonna go across. And you also see like almost oval or rectangular lens flares as the light's gonna be hitting in that as you're moving the lens back and forth from the light source. So sometimes I prefer this really cool, almost sci-fi anamorphic look to the lens flares, but other times I really just like the natural tame softness to a spherical lens flare. Again, play it out, feel it out, see what you want for your project, ask around if you're working with many people, come to a group decision as to like, what style lens flare you want. If you've got a flary project, if you don't have any hard light, then just completely ignore that. So the question that started this all, anamorphic or spherical, now doesn't seem as clean, clear, and concise. There's not just one answer that I can recommend for you. It's important to ask yourself, do you want soft shots with a lot of character and cool bokeh? Then maybe go towards the anamorphic route. But if you really need this tack sharp, clean cut clinical look, spherical may be the way to go. Or if you're looking for a really wide field of view, but you don't need a lot of headroom, anamorphic is a good choice. But opposite to that, if you need the headroom or you're making social media cuts and you need those vertical Instagram story cuts or Instagram post cuts, spherical may be the best way to go. And that's almost always my determining factor as to asking the client, where are you posting this? Are you posting it on Instagram a lot? Mobile phones, mobile devices? then oftentimes I go with spherical just for that sole reason. So there's a lot of factors that play into your decision behind and a lot of factors that I completely did not mention here. So again, I cannot give you a straightforward answer as to which lens is better. It's all a matter of each individual project. So with that being said, if you have made it this far, leave a comment down below of the lens that you prefer or if you have any cool projects coming along and if so, tag Brady's Classroom for all of us to see. But that is all that I have for you guys today. So if you found this video helpful, please leave a like button or hit the like button, leave a subscribe, do all of that. And that is all that I've got for you guys today. So I will see you next week. Have a great week and class dismissed.